Hi, this is Peter Hart. Welcome back to FAIR TV. By now, almost everyone agrees, whether they like what he did or not, Edward Snowden has started an important debate. Barack Obama's January 17th speech laid out the NSA reforms he's willing to consider, and that inspired some of the Sunday chat shows to talk about Edward Snowden and the NSA. But a debate? Hardly. Meet the Press brought on, first, former politicians Newt Gingrich and Harold Ford, who both expressed disdain for Snowden and agreed he should face trial. Then came Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein and Republican Representative Mike Rogers, both ardent supporters of the NSA. And that's when Rogers made this charge. I believe there's a reason he ended up in the hands, uh, the loving arms of an FSB agent in Moscow. Uh, I don't think that's a coincidence, number one. Oh. Number two, and let me just talk you about think this. think the Russians important. helped Ed Snowden? Uh, I, I believe there's questions to be answered there. I don't think it's, uh, it was a gee whiz luck event that he ended up in Moscow. Uh, under the handling of the FSB. That's a significant development, if true. Uh, well. Dianne Feinstein found that Russia link plausible, too. The only deviation from the anti-Snowden line came in a brief interview with Reddit co-founder and NSA critic Alexis Ohanian. Meanwhile, over on CBS's Face the Nation, there once again was Rogers making the same claims about Russia. Next, Bob Schieffer interviewed former Obama advisor Tom Donilon. Snowden's done great damage to the United States uh, across a range of dimensions. Uh, he had a lot of options here to raise uh, issues that he might have had about these programs, uh, and I've been in no way would be for amnesty or clemency. For would you call Snowden. him a traitor? I would call him a traitor, yes. You would call him yes. a traitor. And then viewers heard from former CIA Deputy Director Michael Morell, who called the Snowden revelations the worst disclosures in the history of the U.S. intelligence community. Polls suggest that the U.S. public has grown more critical of the NSA surveillance programs. Clearly no Sunday chat shows were surveyed. Staying on Face the Nation for a minute, that interview with Mike Morell ended with this. We're gonna see a lot more of you uh, starting tomorrow. Mike Morell will be joining CBS News as a contributor to all our broadcasts. So welcome aboard. So viewers will be hearing more from an ex-CIA official who has been a persistent critic of Snowden and a persistent supporter of the NSA. Not just that, he actually wants to expand some of their programs, as he explained in a Washington Post op-ed to include storing email metadata in addition to phone records. Morell is, of course, free to hold those opinions. What's interesting and troubling is that CBS thinks viewers need to hear more regularly from someone espousing this point of view. Along the same line, CNN has just hired former Israeli ambassador Michael Oren as its Mideast contributor. Oren's record is about defending Israel from its critics. That's not exactly a position in short supply in the U.S. media, so why the need to add one more voice? Would CNN hire a Palestinian contributor? Or how about a regular contributor on surveillance from a civil liberties group? That would actually expand the discussion. These hires are a reminder that corporate media are too often looking to keep such debates very narrow. Sometimes you can tell a lot about a news story just by looking at the headline. Here's the front page of USA Today on January 16th over a story about fracking and oil drilling in Texas. It perfectly captures the tone of the piece. Oil drilling and fracking were creating, according to one guy, thousands of new millionaires. That's worth an exclamation point. So everyone's striking it rich, at least until about the 12th paragraph, when the paper explains that for every story of overnight riches, there are tales of the boom's potentially negative impact. Overpowering chemical smells near wells, residents waking up in the middle of the night with headaches or nosebleeds, threats to drinking aquifers, roads banged up by oil trucks, and spikes in traffic fatalities, soaring rents, earthquakes. Well, traffic deaths, pollution, and health problems sure don't sound like potential impacts. But these concerns are obviously footnotes. There's a reference to methane gas leaks, but nothing about how this greenhouse gas might affect climate change, an issue that isn't even mentioned in a piece about a massive boom in fossil fuel production. If the question here is what matters more, a few people getting rich quick versus public health and the environment, USA Today tells us where they stand. The article closes by observing that the bigger question is what to do when the oil stops flowing. Some might say there are even bigger questions than that. 
I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.